guys, Auto Fanatic here. We're gonna do a quick video. I'm um, gonna do a little discussion on some garage shop flooring solutions. Um, like I said, this is stuff that I never ever even considered for my home shop and for our manufacturing shop over the years. It's just something of putting plastic flooring and stuff like that just didn't really make a lot of sense for the type of stuff that we do. So one of my good clients, um, he's renovating where he keeps all his cars and he's exploring some options. The architect explored some of these options and gave me a call last week and he dropped them off. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just do a video on this because there's a lot of stuff that I want to touch upon with garage flooring. And the most important thing for any of you guys, you really have to understand what you're going to be doing in your home garage. Are you just going to be parking cars? Are you going to be detailing cars? Are you going to be doing automotive restorations? Um, are you going to be painting, welding, grinding? And a lot of those things you really, really need to understand because, you know, any kind of garage flooring solution, whether you do polyurea, you do epoxy, you do any of these polypropylene injected tiles, the ones in the rear, those are PVC based uh, solid, you know, PVC based solid tiles. Those are completely different. Those are strictly designed for the industrial market, and I'll tell you a little bit about that when we get uh, further on in the video. Uh, and, and like I said, it really depends on your needs. Uh, I'm always a fan and always was a fan of epoxy flooring. I just like the ease of cleaning things up. If you drop nuts, bolts, and everything else, you could easily find them. And uh, it also makes it a lot easier to clean out, whether you want to broom the shop, power wash it, vacuum it, blow it out with a blower, it doesn't really matter. But you have to understand every single flooring solution has trade-offs. Um, for me, I don't like putting the speckles in an epoxy floor because when you drop hardware, it makes it harder to see. So I like a solid neutral color on the floor with a medium to high gloss shine. You just gotta be careful when it's wet, fine. Not really a big deal, but it makes working on cars mechanically and uh, if you're doing any kind of fabrication, that much easier. So the floor of my home, this was done quite a number of years ago and I beat the crap out of it. I've built and restored so many cars since this floor was done. Engines were pulled out, transmissions, welding, you name it, it was done on this floor and it held up extremely, extremely well. And when we did this floor, we used an industrial solvent based coating and we scarified the floor, we acid etched it, we did all the prep and realistically, it cost me about $2,000 for materials, renting the machine, and having a contractor friend of mine help me out for a couple of days. And then we had to move everything out, put them in storage pods and everything else because we had to let this dry for about 10 days before I put any kind of you know, uh, heavy foot traffic or you know, my carts and tools and everything else on it. So we're going to start here. We got some samples from Race Deck and from Swiss Tracks. These are the two most popular um, companies that you're going to see anywhere online in the magazines or whatever. That's just what everyone seems to use. Uh, then in the back, we have a company called Advanta Flooring. And a lot of you guys may have not have heard of this company. And I never did as well because you don't see this stuff in the rear advertised in any of the automotive forums or anything like that. And believe it or not, I found out that... Thyssen Krupp Corporation, which is an industrial chemical manufacturing plant, which is right nearby, they have this Advanta flooring in their 80,000 square foot warehouse where it's getting, you know, forklifted, heavy carts and skids dragged all day long. And I talked to the shop manager and the warehouse and I uh, just wanted to get some more feedback. And he says the floor is outstanding. He said if you could afford it, that's the floor to get. Uh, it's just far better than doing an epoxy coating for them because it has like a, a non-slip, a uh, little bit of a texture to it. And I'm going to go into some details uh, about that in a couple of minutes. So let's start with uh, the polypropylene stuff from Race Tech and Swiss Tracks. All right, guys, we're back. So let's start with the Race Deck garage flooring. And, you know, they sent me a catalog here, and it's obvious that from their marketing... They're marketing it as a showcase garage, a location where you're going to be parking your cars, your motorcycles, etc. Um, they do show some commercial garages here, but you guys have to understand something. When a manufacturer 
of flooring or tools gives out a product for an endorsement or for marketing purposes, that's exactly what they're doing. I will tell you now, because I know these people in this entire catalog, you know, from all these uh, Cobra 427 builders, the Ring Brothers, I know all these guys personally. Um, I doubt that they're going to go and spend, let's say, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to do their entire shop floor in any of this stuff. That's just my opinion. I don't see it happening. But I tell you right now, if the company gives it to them, they're going to lay it down. They're going to take some photos, make it look nice. But I've talked to these guys, you know, firsthand because I'm in the business, and uh, it's just one of those things where, hey, they give you stuff, and you know, you pretty much use it for television and for marketing, and that's what it is. So. They sent two samples here. They sent the coin pattern. This was probably one of their first, um, this and the diamond plate. And you could see, I mean, it's, it's about a half inch construction. It's not really that heavy duty. You know, you could bend it and it's all, you know, snap locked into place. Now the new version is this open type of grid pattern. And aesthetically, it looks really nice, okay? And there's something that I like on the race deck that the Swiss Tracks doesn't have, and it's where the material is injected molded. On the Swiss Tracks, there are areas which I think, and I pick up on aesthetically, that they could have hid the injection molding in locations on the backside rather than having them on the face. And uh, like I said, they designed this, you could see here, where it's got some sort of a channeling system, you know, where they say for water. This one, it's not very, you know, not very strong. It's very flexible. And I'll show you right here, and this is an issue. Now, my garage floor is fairly straight. Now, if you look in the far right corner up here, okay, you might be able to see this on camera, but I'm pushing down. The, the tile itself has a little bit of a warp to it, okay, on the far right-hand corner. And that's an issue that I worry about with this stuff because... I understand as you lock them in together, the weight and the gravity, of course, is going to keep it level. But if you have temperature changes, um, you know, any kind of like sudden sharp impact that could possibly cause the plastic to, to um, lose its memory and shape, you're going to have an issue where every time you walk on it or drive on it, it's going to start slapping against the substrate, which is, you know, your solid floor below. And that's something that just bothers me with a lot of this stuff is... For my needs, I don't want to be rolling thousands of pounds of equipment over this, whether it's my welding rig, my toolboxes, the bandsaw, whatever I have in here. Uh, I just think it's going to be prone to wearing out. It's going to look like crap. And the resistance that this is going to give to the casters in here on all my equipment is going to be a, a serious problem to move this stuff around by yourself. So that's one of the drawbacks. The other drawback is when you go with the solid tile, and this is from talking to Race Deck directly, uh, they're not watertight. So what happens is when you click the tiles in all the way around the perimeter, if you get any seepage at the seams, they, this, the solution, whether it's gasoline, whether it's water, um, oil, it will go through the cracks. The problem is with the solid tile, you may never find and see where all of that solution went then it's going to probably cause more damage to your substrate. It could cause mold, um, you know, to grow and all this other stuff. So I don't really think this is a great idea, you know, for, for, to be honest with you. This, this might be good uh, for Barrett Jackson or, you know, at an auction where they're going to roll some cars up and they're going to, you know, at the end of a couple of days, they're going to pull it away and, and go to another event. I think that's fine. I would personally never put this down uh, in, a, in a workshop environment. And that's what I wanted to just let you guys know. So that's the race deck. Now, the Swiss Tracks tile is sturdier and thicker than the race deck. But like I was telling you, you could see the injected molding provisions in the aesthetic of the tile, all right, on each one. And I personally do not like that. It's something that a lot of you guys may not pick up on, but I do, because um, I'm totally all about the little details. And I just don't like that. I think they could have did a better job on designing the tooling to do this on the backside. And same thing here, it's got the grid pattern where it's supposed to let the water pass through. But you guys have to think about something. Uh, I don't know about your garage or any garage or workshop, but the floor is supposed to be level. Now, 
if you have a level floor and you're going to have liquid and you're going to power wash your floor with this stuff, how do you honestly think you're going to get all of the water out of your garage or workspace, okay? Unless your garage or shop is built on a hill, pitched on an incline, this really doesn't serve much of a great purpose. I'm just going to be honest with you on that. Uh, I just don't see this being that effective. And I did a couple of tests already on this, okay? I poured some oil, and I'm going to show you guys. And uh, it's just, to be honest with you, this is not made for somebody that's going to be pulling engines out and transmissions and rear ends and grinding and welding and doing, you know, custom chassis on their hot rods or whatever. This is not really made for that. This is going to get totally destroyed. Uh, and that's why I, I still prefer, you know, the epoxy flooring or any kind of solid surface coating. So that's the situation with this. They sent me two colors. They sent me the gray and the silver. Um, and I just wanted to see what this stuff looks like. And I think aesthetically it looks great. I mean, you know, they sent me the commercial application. And as you can see, they're just showing parked cars and vehicles in there. Now, I talked to these guys a couple of times because I said, listen, give me a reference as to who's using this in an industrial environment in the New York tri-state area. They have still yet to call me back. Okay, so that's telling you something. Now, if you look here, I believe this is Rockstar Garage. Wanted to, you, know, you could Google it and look it up on YouTube. They gave them the flooring to try out, and they gave them just a portion of the workshop. And if you see the video, the stuff gets trashed. And I don't know about how many guys are going to want to, you know, rip the floor up every six months or every couple of months and do a cleaning. I mean, it's just a total pain in the ass. And uh, it's just something that I don't see anybody, as far as in an in industrial manufacturing or automotive working environment, is really going to want to do this. And I'm just being honest with you guys here. And I got some floor jacks, and I just want to show you guys, you know, it's, it's totally fine, okay? So you're not getting any real resistance, you know, with this pattern, which is good, okay? And it seems very sturdy. Now, we'll use the other type of floor jack. Same deal, okay? But this is something I want to show you guys. I got a couple of loose no, uh, screws and washers. Now, you drop these on the floor, okay? Now, you could already see they went through to the other side. Now, if you're working on your car, whether it's an exhaust, transmission, suspension, and you drop something. Now, if you have your car on four jack stands up in the air and you're on this surface and you're working on your car and you drop a nut and a bolt and you think you're going to try to get that out of there with a needle nose plier or a magnet, it's not happening. So what are you going to do? You think that you're going to be underneath your car with your car up in the air on jack stands and you're going to click a whole series of tiles out to go get an o-ring an e-clip or you know a retaining pin or whatever falls through these cracks dude it's crazy you would pull your hair out if you work on cars you work with your hands this floor will drive you crazy i tell you right now the first time i even thought about this because you know working on stuff you're going to drop stuff that's just the nature of the beast uh you know working with your hands and uh, that's why I don't feel that this flooring makes sense for anybody that's going to do any kind of woodworking, fabrication, automotive, any kind of mechanical things where material could fall in between these cracks. I just don't think it's a good idea. If you're washing your cars, detailing your cars, you have a showcase garage, this is probably an ideal solution. Okay, But for someone like me that has a lot of industrial equipment and works with my hands, I don't think this makes a lot of sense. And I'll show you here, you know, and we'll grab the hardware that falls through. So it's just one of those things you got to think about, you know, these plastic floorings, there's a lot of hype on the internet, and there's also an opportunity for you guys to get involved, and you're going to have buyer's remorse. This stuff is not cheap. It's very expensive. So if you think about it here, we'll take the flooring away. You know, you drop your hardware. On, a, on an epoxy coated floor, no problem. You could get to it, not an issue whatsoever. So be, being that they're not watertight in terms of interlocking together on the solid panels, and then you have the issue of stuff falling in between, you also have the issue of, okay, these tires, look at this one's actually really bad. 
on how bow they are and they're not laying perfectly flat, that just concerns me a little bit. Uh, and I'm not the type of guy that's going to say, hey, let me go spend a couple of thousand on this and think that I'm going to pick it up and move it to another location. Now, I'm just not going to do that, to be honest with you. I just, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel expensive. It doesn't feel like a quality, luxury type flooring. I like polished concrete. I like terrazzo. I like porcelain, uh, certain slabs of granite and marble, and, uh, you know, like a poured epoxy floor. That's, to be honest with you, those are just what I, you know, the, the, the coatings that I like. Now, my client that originally thought about this, all of these systems, he is going to do a terrazzo floor. And if you guys don't know about terrazzo, do a Google search, watch some YouTube videos. It is the most expensive flooring system you could ever get. So <clears throat> the size of his location where he keeps all his cars, I think it's going to cost him about $80,000, okay, to do the terrazzo flooring. And it's just a real labor-intensive process where they got to come in, they got to put grids, they got to polish it and grind it. It's just a huge, huge thing. But when it's done, it looks like a masterpiece, and, and it'll last you forever if you take care of it. So that's pretty much where he's going. He looked at this stuff. He called me up. He said, hey, come pick it up. What do you think of it? And I'm like, there's no way I would ever use this, uh, not even in my garage. So let's move over to the other. Actually, before I do that, I just want to show you something here. So like I was saying, it, let's say you drop your tools, a piece of steel, um, you know, anything, like, like an engine comes off a dolly or a rear end, something that's heavy, right? Let's just see what's going to happen when I drop something heavy on here. Okay. So that was one impact that hit the tile. And if you guys could see, it totally cracked it. Okay. Totally cracked it. And I dropped a small bench vise from about two feet above the tile. And it totally cracked right here. Okay, so that just shows you that, and it looks like total crap. So now let's just say you're in an automotive environment where you're dropping tools, brake rotors, um, you know, and that's just what it, the way it is, man. You work on cars, you just throw shit. <laughs> that's just how it goes. But, um, you know, this floor over time will get totally, totally destroyed. And uh, I just think you have to really think about if you're looking for a flooring solution, what are your needs? What are your wants? What are you doing in your actual space? Okay? If you can't make a clear identification as far as your needs and wants, don't do it yet. Figure out what you're actually going to do in your space. If you're going to build a dream garage, that's one story. If you're just going to try to spruce up what you have, that's another story. And if you have a budget, I'm going to be honest with you, this stuff is more expensive than, than uh, you know, just doing a good epoxy flooring. So now we're going to move on over to the Advanta PVC-based flooring. And uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you another test. So I got a little bit of 5W30 motor oil, okay? And I just spilled it onto the tile. And like I said, it's one of those things where the oil now is on the, on the substrate. It's on my floor. How am I going to clean this up? You can't. You could power wash this all day long. You're never, ever going to get this up until you remove these tiles. And now if this happens... When you're working on a car, and this is underneath the engine, transmission, anywhere under the drive line, uh, even the brake system, if you get brake fluid on here, if this doesn't get cleaned up, it's going to cause a problem. And the only way to clean up spills and chemicals, you're going to have to remove the section. And that, to me, just becomes a pain in the ass. I, I'll be honest with you, you're going to spend more time cleaning and disassembling this floor, and you're going to regret the day that you ever gave them your credit card and ordered it. I'm going to tell you that now. Um, like I said, this is good for somebody that's parking the cars, washing their cars, detailing, you know, simple stuff, light duty stuff. This is a, a perfect solution. If you don't want to do epoxy or if you have a bad slab in your house or in your workshop, this is a great solution. But if you have a lot of equipment, tools, you're actually wrenching on cars, I don't recommend this at all. I recommend the, the last solution, and we're going to move over and I'm going to show you a little bit about that. All right, guys, we're back. I just want to go over the last flooring sample that we have here. 
And uh, I just want to just give you a little bit of what they're telling you here. They're considering it the best flooring value for residential, commercial, and industrial application. It says once you've compared your samples with look-alike rigid plastic floor tiles, which is race stack and Swiss tracks, we think you will find Tough Seal to be the best flooring solution. Okay. It says Tough Seal is real flooring designed by experts to solve the most difficult flooring problems. Compared to lightweight rigid plastic tile, each square foot of Tough Seal tile contains twice as much premium quality material, 1.7 pounds. Tough Seal is thus heavier and fl more flexible, more durable, quieter, provides better comfort under your foot, and has a better appearance. It also is safer, more slip resistant, stays in place, and will not shift even under heavy loads or constant traffic. Okay, the tiles are 18 by 18. And it says, as with most rigid plastic tiles, making it easier to install. Easier does it maintain and provide a better appearance with fewer invisible seams. Tough Seal doesn't retain dirt and soil the way similar floor tiles do. Okay, and that's just what I was showing you with the other ones. Uh, Tough Seal's composition, flexibility, and patented interlocking edge help it stay tightly joined together even over a regular surface, unlike most rigid plastic tiles. Surface moisture, water, and liquids can seep through the seams of rigid tiles and be trapped underneath, breeding mold and mildew. With Tough Seal's zipper-like edge design, moisture and liquids stay on top of the tile, where they evaporate, roll off, or easily removed. Okay? Now, I talked to these guys in detail for about an hour, okay? And I'm going to tell you one thing. This freaking tile is heavy. It is really heavy. It's like, I think, four pounds. You know, four pounds per tile. And, uh... They sent me some gray ones and some white ones. This one has a very fine texture, it's smooth, and this is the interlocking edge that they're talking about, okay? So when you put these tiles together, okay, they guarantee that at the seams, you're never gonna get seepage of fluid. And if you look here, and I'm gonna try to get the camera close, there's a channel, okay, right here, where the tiles interlock in that channel. And this channel also will prevent any seepage of liquids into the seam and through down to the substrate. Now, I called Thyssen Krupp Corporation, which is about five minutes away from where I am. And uh, I talked to the guy that I know in sales and he let me into the warehouse and they have these tiles in gray. They have the coin pattern. And I was talking to the warehouse manager on how long they've been on the floor. And he says they've been on the floor for about 10 years. And you do see, you know, wear of tire marks and whatnot. But he says that the floor holds up incredibly well. They have yet to have a failure of one single tile in 10 years in the 80,000 square foot warehouse that I was in. And these guys are like lifting. Uh, they got multiple forklifts. They got uh, pallet jacks. They got trucks going in and out. I mean, it, it's a very, very busy industrial warehouse environment. So this stuff is, is a little bit more money than the plastic tiles. And I just want you, the reason I'm doing this video is because I never saw this stuff before. I didn't even know about this product until my client was exploring these options. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I really think you guys need to order up some samples, give these guys at Advanta Flooring a call in Virginia. And uh, if you're looking at floor tiles, I think you guys should really consider this if you're going to be working on the floor, you're going to be doing like any kind of mechanical stuff. I think this is probably an outstanding solution, uh, you know, as far as floor tiles go. And I think it's probably the best. Another thing is when being that it's made out of PVC, this always lays flat. Okay. There's no bowing in any of these tiles that they sent me. Once I lay it flat on the floor, it's flat and it's so damn heavy that it doesn't really give it a chance to kind of wobble around. Now, as far as installation goes, I talked to their industrial and commercial installing team. They said that when you install these, you don't butt it up against the wall, your perimeter, whether you have block wall or, or whatever you're doing. You would leave about a quarter of an inch. Then you would put a line of tape and then you would use a, um, the guy mentioned like a polyurethane type of caulking or, or seal. It's called Feno Seal. Uh, I believe they use it for vinyl uh, siding and windows. And you would put a bead all around your perimeter. 
and that's going to give the floor a little bit of breathing room to expand and contract if you have you know the four seasons of the year like we do and then at the garage door or roll-up door or whatever situation you have they have a threshold that also gets bonded down and then you bond down the first three rows of these tiles okay this is not a solution where you're going to just put it down and pick it up and bring it somewhere else this is not that solution the, it, it you can do that but there is some bonding required and i like this a little bit better to me uh mechanical fastening this down and and working around the perimeter and taking in consideration the expansion and contraction and and just everything else this floor seems to be the best as far as that goes now we got the white coin pattern here and i rolled my floor jack on it and you can see it's a little trash okay so i'm just going to give it a quick spray and i'm going to show you how easy that stuff comes off all right we're just going to use a little bit of my my Malco Red Thunder okay and let me just show you guys and like that this thing cleans up like new so if you think about this you know and I and I did a, a couple of abusive tests on this floor already you know just in my space here and you know white is a, it looks great but it's gonna show every speck of dirt and every time you walk across it but if you do regular mopping like they suggested and you use the right cleaners and you guys could see uh, you know within a couple of minutes you could restore the PVC tile um, back to new again and that's something that I don't know for some reason you guys may not understand this in the video there's a quick video I just want to show you order up some samples of this stuff order up the race deck order up the Swiss tracks hold this stuff in your hand I'm telling you this stuff feels heavy duty it doesn't feel cheap it doesn't feel like you know some injected molded toy I mean this this stuff is heavy heavy duty and uh, I don't know like I said my clients not going for it but believe it or not I was actually considering it you know after I got this I was thinking about it but to be honest with you I'm gonna be moving uh, very soon and I'm not going to put any money into redoing my floor right now. It's just, not, it's just not worth it. When I get into the bigger space, that's when I'm most likely going to do a poured, uh, you know, really poured, thick flooring. And it's most likely not going to be something like this. But I think it's a great option. I think you guys should check it out. And uh, this is just my, you know, quick video on some suggestions and things you need to consider if you're going to look into garage floor tiles. Because um, the plastic ones... That shit's not going to fly for someone like me or any of my friends that work, you know, work with their hands in cars. It's just not. Um, and I also don't like the fact that, yeah, it's got the channels and it's all open. You could drop your screws. You could get oil in there. Um, and then when you want to clean it, you pretty much have to rip up the whole section. And I don't have time for something like that. That's just more, more work than what it's worth. And that's why I like the epoxy floor. You know, when I got to clean it, I pull out the mop, pull out the, uh, the broom and uh, get the blower and it's done and it just makes my life a hell of a lot easier uh, they also said on this material here it does hold up to welding sparks and you could leave transmission fluid uh, differential fluid and any other chemical on this and it will not change the color and eat into it that was my concern that's why I wanted to see what a white version looked like uh, and I wanted to know if it would turn yellow. So I actually did a test and I poured some Dextron on here and I left some Lucas Gear Oil and I let it sit for a couple of days and I just wiped it right up and it, you can see the tile here. It's, it's perfect. So there's, there's no issues with that. And that's something that, I, that always concerns me with any kind of a white plastic rubber uh, substrated you know, material or, or manufactured material like such is uh, will it change color over time? How UV stable is this? How chemical resistant is it? And I tell you, man, this stuff is awesome. I don't know how much it costs, but uh, I'll put a link to Advanta Flooring in the description of the video. Please give these guys a call. I'll put a link to Race Deck and uh, Swiss Tracks as well, and even a couple of epoxy floor companies that you should uh, start looking into. But I think you guys should look into this. Nobody's talking about this on YouTube. Nobody's doing this um, on YouTube. And I feel that this is 
an outstanding product that needs to be taken into consideration. If you guys got any questions or comments, hit me up direct, autofanatic at yahoo.com. I'm most likely going to just, you know, chuck these or send these samples out. If any of you guys want some samples, I will throw these in a box. Uh, you pay the shipping and they're yours. I don't really need these around here, but uh, stay tuned. If you guys have used this flooring, have you seen it in commercial industrial applications, let me know what you think of it. I personally saw it. Race Deck and Swiss Tracks was not able to give me any industrial, commercial, or warehouse environment in the entire Northeast that has their flooring that I could go and see how it looks after you know wear and tear because they're not using it for that. It's, it's made for residential garages. That's just what it is. Uh, residential garages and for events where at the end of the event, they rip it up and they're done and they move on. So hope you guys like this video and uh, hope you guys learned a little something about another brand of flooring that a lot of you guys don't even know about because I never heard of this stuff. And uh, maybe this will help explore your options for your garage floor. Any more questions, comments, post them below. I'll see you guys soon.